Okay, so I'm going to start, it, start trying to get the uh, serial port working. I do have source code for the monitor that was uh, written by Intel. Um, so this was written back in 1978. Um, has been modified since then. But it was a, a conditional compile um, version of the software that hit a bunch of different platforms. So the 8020 platform is uh, is definitely in the mix. Um, so uh, there's a lot of stuff in here, and but it does have um, baud rate um, equations for setting the timer. And it, it obviously has things for uh, character in, character out. So I'm going to use those. So I've taken my program um, and I've added to it. So I basically cut and pasted some stuff and uh, relabeled some things. So now I have um, uh, the timer in here, which supposedly is at DC to DF. And it's uh, counter 0, 1, and 2, and then a control port. So four ports, much like the 8255. Um, and then there's a bunch of um, stuff for the UART, uh, which they call the, con the console port. Um, so the UART lives at these addresses, uh, ED through... Uh, ED is the control port or the status, whether it's read or write, and then character in and character out are at EC. So there's two ports, in and out for data, in and out for control. And then there are some actual bits, patterns to set certain modes. So this is initialization. I don't know what they are. I'm just taking them at, at, at their word. Um, there's the, there's the, values for the countdown of the timers for different baud rates. So I'm going to try to target 9600. Um, and the uh, the two 8255s live at E4 through E7 and E8 through EB. Um, OK, so this is the beginning of our program. Um, we're going to initialize the 8255. We've seen that before. Um, now I've added up another initialization. Uh, which comes from that other program. So we're going to disable interrupts. Always a smart thing to do at the very beginning of your program for 8080. Uh, we're going to set the UART to some mode. Uh, so we're going to write some mode character and some command character to the UART. Um, I've commented out the stack things. I don't know if memory works yet or not. So I've commented out stack. Um, then we're going to initialize the timer. So all of this stuff here initializes the timer. Um, and we're going to use that 9600 value. Um, LXI is a load 16 bit, so it, it's, it's going to load uh, the H and L registers. It's, it's then going to write the L register to control 2, uh, counter 2, and then it's going to write the H register to counter 2. So it's a, it's a double byte right and i've commented those out and then um and it's going to go into this loop which is basically flash the leds that's what we've seen before so the only difference between this program and the last program is i've added this initialization section so what it should do is it should initialize the counter and the counter should start outputting a clock to the uart so we'll be able to go to the UART uh, receive clock and transmit clock and see if we're actually getting a clock there and seeing what value it is to see if it has any relationship to 9600 or not. Uh, so let's go ahead and program this and we'll go out to the garage and um, pop it in and see what it does. All right, so we have the new program in and uh, it's power on and our LEDs are flashing so the program's running so what we need to do now is uh, bring over our measurement device. And the uh, serial clocks are available on this pin right here. And let's hit auto scale. Awesome. 
So we're getting a uh, we're getting a square wave, and uh, the square wave is measuring 537 kilohertz. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're getting a clock, so that's great news. I don't know if that clock is 9600 <laughs> version or not. I believe um, when it gets into the UART, it gets divided by 64. If I'm right, I need to check on that. So the clock should be 64 times 9600. So anyway, um, we shall see. But uh, so far we have the uh, the uh, 8253 programmed and outputting a uh, a nice square wave. So that's good news. If we need to change the timing, of course, we can do that. Uh, just need to figure out um, if the uh, the clock is the right one for that program. Is, is that what they were expecting? Uh, the clock is... Oh, I'd have to go measure it now. The clock is um, 2.14 megahertz. Uh, so... Maybe they were expecting a 2 megahertz clock or something. Who knows? Um, so that's good news. All right, progress. Okay, I'm looking in the um, user's guide to this uh, to this board, and there is a, uh, a transmitter clock and a receiver clock. The transmitter clock it says, um, if you using synchronous transmission mode, then the clock is equal to the baud rate. In asynchronous mode, the frequency is a multiple. And you can choose the multiple to be 1, 16, or 64. And then it gives some examples. So 110 baud, it's 110 hertz. Or uh, 16 times that, or 64 times that. So here's the 9600 baud. 16 would be 153. And if we take our calculator out, and we do 9600, and we multiply that by 64, it would be 6, 614 kilohertz, 614 kilohertz. So it's not matching the number that we're getting out of the board. Um, so we'll have to dig into that. We might have to come up with our own number, uh, figure out um, what I'm doing wrong. But um, looks as though that's an easy fix. Just It's just a divider in the uh, clock circuit. So. Just have to figure out what the formula is and pick the right uh, the right value out here. Here's the receive clock. They're they're both the same. In fact, in the circuit, the receive clock and the transmit clock are actually hardwired together, so they're they're both using the exact same clock. Um, I need to figure out whether I'm using synchronous mode or asynchronous mode. I believe I'm using asynchronous mode, but I need to I need to verify that. And um, yeah. Um, Figure out why. Here's our UART. Um, you can see that there is a pin nine is the transmit clock, and pin twenty five is the receive clock. So those are external inputs to the uh, to the UART. Um, all right. Well, some more investigation. All right, uh, let's take a look at the um, 8253 in detail. Uh, let's go zoom in here. Uh, so the 8253 is here, and um, the output of counter two, so there's zero, one, and two, the output of counter two goes up here to the UART. So it's the output of counter two that we want to program. So what is the input of the 8253? The 8253 is just a down counter. You just program it to do down counting. So what's the input? And then we'll know what to divide it by to get to the output. So the input of the 8253 uh, there uh, comes from... It actually comes from the bus clock and then it goes through a flip-flop, gets divided by two, and then it finally ends up uh, coming into the clock input. So there are three clock inputs, each, each for the counter, so you can have three different clock inputs, three different clock outputs. Um, but all the clock inputs are all tied together. And so we can just look at one of them, so pin 9. So let's look at pin 9. Uh, pin 9 
8253 is here. Can you, am I, let me zoom out a bit here so you can see the, uh, let's see the counter as well. So, uh, let's see, pin 9, this is 12, 11, 10, 9. There we go. So the um, uh, input to the um, counter is uh, about a megahertz, 1.07. That's not a very accurate counter, but 1.07. And uh, we know from looking at the code that I programmed, uh, it's a 16-bit counter, and it was loaded with 0, 02. Uh, so the number 2. So it, was, it should be divided by 2. And if we take a look at the output, which is here, we get 537 kilohertz, which is about half a megahertz. So yeah, it's getting divided by 2. Um, so all we have to do is change that 537 to 9.6. 9.6 kilohertz. We'll just try to aim for that. Um, so we'll just come up with the divisor um, to take the 1.7, 1.07 megahertz and get a 9600 kilohertz and uh, or 9.6 kilohertz and uh, go from there. So that should be easy to try. Okay, I have a different um, different program and uh, I decided that the divider dividing factor should be 112. So 1.07 megahertz divided by 112 should give us about 9600 baud rate. So let's check, see how I did. Uh, there you go, 9.6 kilohertz. Let me turn off my. Uh, That beeping was my uh, UV eraser. <laughs> it uh, beeps after it's done. Okay, so how did we do? That is great. 9.6 kilohertz. 9.59 kilohertz. Close enough, I say. I forget what the uh, accuracy is for baud rate, but I think that's certainly within uh, within tolerance. And. Uh, we should be able to now program the 8251 to output some data and see if it's uh, spitting out data on the serial connector at 9600. Um, we can use my Rigel scope. It has a, a, a serial decoding function in it. So I think that'll be the uh, next step is to try to uh, try to get some data coming out of the uh, out of the serial uh, connector.